All right, everybody, let's get the show on the road. Let's start it up. Let's get it going. I got the wrong page going on here. There we go. Now we're rocking and rolling. That's what I wanted to show. Starting soon, not ending soon. I hope nobody logged in and was like, wow, this thing's almost over. <sighs> Problems. It's okay, though. We're all right. We're doing all right. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Having a great day, I hope. I hope you're having an awesome week. Shoutouts. Let's do some shoutouts to everybody in the house. Sylvia, what's up with Sylvia? Today's lesson should be how to pass TOEFL in week one. Yeah. That's, uh, that's tricky. Study hard. Uh, TOEFL is a tricky class. It's like an IELTS class, right? It's a little bit academic. There's some stuff. I did a video back a little while ago, how to write a good essay in English. Uh, check that one out. I don't remember which one it was. We need to start labeling these things. But uh, check that one out, Silvio. If you're looking for a little writing help, check out one of the videos that I did a few weeks ago. Um, that one had some writing stuff on it. Anyways, everybody else. Hello, Jorge. Hello, Ziad, my man. What's up? Uh, pray. Pray can work. Pray can help. Anyways, hopefully. Mentally, it'll help you. Mamti. Hello, Mamti. How you doing? Uh, and the Zaire Kurd from Kurdistan. And your last name is Kurd, or it is you are a Kurd? Eunice, hello Eunice. Uh, Gloria's in the house, hello Gloria. Ciro, JB, what's up JB? Uh, who else we got? Judith, hello Judith. Judith keeps me honest. Rodrigo from New South Wales, what's up brother? Uh, who else we got in this chat here? I see, I see, I see, I say. What's up, how are you doing? Yeah, kind of a lecture, I won't say a lecture, but. Khalil, what's up, how you doing, Khalil? And did I miss anybody? Ciro, what's up, Ciro? Hello, Gamza. Hello from Turkey. What's up, Marjorie? Hello. All right, I think I got everybody rocking and rolling. All right, so as usual, you're tuned into Smart, Smart English, keeping you smart, the SMRT style. Everybody's good. Ciro's from Italy. What's up? Come stai? Come stai, Ciro? Uh, all right, so here's a good, I think it's an interesting topic for you guys today. So today we're going to do. And there it is. There's the smart that we all lo know and love. Everybody's in the house. We have no more rooms. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so what we're going to do today is actually, hello, pretty. Hello, pretty Yeti. Nice name. Uh, we're going to be doing some research today. But let's start with a question of the day. I know you need your question of the day just to turn on the brain. So here it is. Let me throw this in the chat. The question of the day is, how do you improve your second language skills, English, Chinese? So you guys are learning English, of course. That's why you're here. How do you do that? What's the, what's the method? So here we're going to do a little sharing, and later we're going to do a little research. And if we have time, we'll do a little reading on this topic, just about language learning, language acquisition. Uh, so what I'd like you guys to do is give, give me your, let me get my face in here if you like. There we go. That's better. I'd like you guys to give me your tips and your hints, and I'd like you guys to share them with each other. Tell me, what's the secret? How do you learn a second language? English speakers, we are notoriously bad at learning second languages, probably because we don't have that, that motivation, that requirement to learn. Oh, we have a Korean student. Hello, Korean student. Hello, we don't get many Korean students. Welcome, come on in. From Korea, sweet. From Seoul, everybody's from Seoul. Are you from Seoul? Uh, watching TV series, okay, so there we go. So the question is, how do you improve your second language skills? in English, of course. What are some things you could do? Read and speak a lot. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good for a good combo, reading and speaking. Give us some tips and tell us, you know, tell us maybe you got a little strategy that you do. Yeah, no problem, buddy. No problem. Welcome. Tell us maybe you got a little tip, maybe you got a little strategy that you do that other people don't know. So share it. Share it with us. Throw it in the chat. Tell us how you do it. You know, are you one of those people who just sits there and memorizes and memorizes? I think, uh, you know, a lot of Asian cultures, we call it rote learning, and they just read it and read it and read it and then try to remember it. And that works well, well for some people, maybe for some people not so much. Uh, but give us your tips, give us your strategies, because today I'm going to actually send you off into internet land. Uh, that's the answer, Marjorie, that's the answer of the day. Ding, 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 you get 100 respect points for that. But uh, today we're going to do a little research and find out some more information on what makes good language learning. And I'll give you my tips, you'll give me our tips, so it'll be a nice little sharing circle of, of wisdom and knowledge about learning a second language. So what else you guys got? I mean, there's some basic tips. Reading, you know, reading's a great one, of course, right? Speaking a lot, sure. Going out after, you know, we, sometimes we have a lot of students here and they don't really speak too much. 
So we say, go out, you know, go hang out. Go hang out with the Brazilians. They talk a lot. Go hang out with the Latins. They talk a lot. Uh, what else we got here? Ciro says, I set my smartphone in English. Good tip, right? Change, the, change your smartphone, put it in English. Boom, every day, some learning. Uh, Eunice, oh, sorry, what's here? What else? Jorge, I download apps in my cell. And share your apps, Jorge. Which apps do you use? Put them in the chat. Could be a useful, useful thing for everybody else in the chat. So give some, give some, uh, give some ideas. What do you use? Uh, what else we got here? Khalil, all, all right for me. I use many resources from the internet, reading, speaking, and I work hard for the f for pronunciation. Yeah, practicing your phonetics, right? Your sounds. Eunice says, interchange language with native speakers every day by Skype. Okay, so Eunice has some private lessons, I guess, maybe a one-on-one. -on -one. You have a, a tutor or a language exchange. Maybe you, there's an idea, right? You can either get a tutor or you can do a little exchange. So oh, you, you want to learn Portuguese? Okay, I'll teach you Portuguese. You teach me English. Boom. Good swap. Good strategy there. So let me, let's write a few of that down because this is useful vocab as well for talking about it. So a language exchange is what you would say if you were you know, trading languages. I'll teach you English, you teach me Portuguese, boom, done. It's called a language exchange. You could also say a language swap. Both of those work, okay? To trade, to, how do I say, to trade. One teaches favors. How do you explain? A language exchange, you get it, okay. Uh, maybe I won't put a meaning for that one, but you guys got it, you can know what I mean. What else we got here? Gloria says, whenever I hear a new word, I look it up in the dictionary. Good. Nice phrasal verb. Look it up. Look something up. Okay, so if you don't know that word, it's a new word for you. Uh, look something up. It's a phrasal verb, and it means to search. Search for something in the dictionary. You look something up. You can look up a business. You can look a business name up. You can look a word up. You can look your friends up. All of those. Phrasal verb. Boom. Search. What else we got here? Abdul Rahim. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Jorge, Duolingo. Duolingo, that's a, oh, there we go. Okay, so this is one of the applications that he's talking about, right? Duolingo, I've, I've heard of that one. I think there's another one called Babbel as well. And I've heard that these, these guys seem to be popular these days. So what's Babbel? There you go, learn Spanish, French, and other languages online. And there you go, click on that. English, I'll check that at the bottom. I'm sure they have something you gotta go through. Okay, so there you go, there's another website you can use as well. Babbel's another one. Rosetta Stone, that was a popular one for a long time, right? What else we got? Diaz says, I think technology has made it very easy for everyone to learn English through the internet. Makes sense. I've been learning English for two years only through using some apps like Lingby, Quizlet, and Elsa speak. Is that like Frozen? You speak like Frozen? Uh, Judith, reading and listening to the news every day in English, yeah. Using a dictionary when new words pop up. Good word, nice word. Pop up when you see something. Something pops up. And it means appear. It's a phrasal verb that means appear. Boom. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, watching the news. What's up, Mahmoud? How you doing? We're talking about how do you learn second language skills? How do you learn English? Give us some tips. Share your tips with us. Uh, Sarah, listening to listening to English radio like BBC and more. Okay, good tips. Yeah, and lots of that's free, right? You can go to a lot of websites, uh, BBC, CBC in Canada, and you can get a lot of free content, right? Also useful. Uh, Skype, Speakler. Okay, lots of ideas. Khalil has Skype, Speakler, Pal Talk. Never heard of Hello Talk. That's Google. Yeah, Google Hangouts. Best app to speak and exchange languages. And of course, you can use Google these days, right? You can use Google Translator, and you can get some translation, so you can kind of figure out. And that's getting that technology is getting better and better. Like YouTube, they always have the subtitles, and now they're like automatically generated and pretty good. You know, they're getting better all the time. Cool content. Uh, was that a stone? Yeah. Songs from lyrics, good, checking it out. Yeah, doing some songs, doing some lyrics, understanding, and then starting to sing, right? Maybe a little pronunciation practice there as well. 
Uh, what else we got? Judah says, if you find books which are written in English and your native language. Okay, there you go. So translated books. So some popular writer, maybe a Brazilian writer, was a Paulo, Paulo Coelho. He writes and then maybe he's internationally famous. Boom, you buy it in another language, maybe in English. Maybe read it first in Portuguese and second read it in English. Okay, cool, very nice. What else we got here? Uh, tandem app. I used use tandem app. I use the tandem app for a language exchange. Okay, so again, some new application to check out. What is that? Uh, shadowing. Eunice, you'll have to explain shadowing. I don't know what you mean. Is it like copying shadowing? Copying somebody? Marjorie, searching everything in English, like tutorial videos. Yeah, and that's the thing. Boom, YouTube, hello. There's lots of stuff on YouTube you can search. You can watch these short little videos, how to do this, how to do that. What a good idea. Uh, what else we got here? JB said, learning grammar, creating a word list, okay? So I'm writing down all the words and then writing phrases and sentences from the word list. Right, so that's good. It's good for the memory. It's good for the written skills as well. You take a new word. You write it down, maybe connecting it with grammar, and you need that repetition, right? I think when you're learning a second language, you need a lot of repetition to, to let it sink in. There's a new word for you. The well, language needs to sink in. It's a phrasal verb, so it means um, uh, easy to remember. It sinks in. Easy to remember in your mind. Yeah, anyways, easy to remember. So there you go. There's a new word for you. Language needs to sink in, so it becomes automatic, right? Uh, what else we got here? <laughs> Hi, Lolly. What's up? How you doing? Talking about learning languages and how do you do it? Uh, use it together? Sure. Yeah, you got to practice it, right? If you don't, practice makes perfect. Boom. New idiom for you. That's true. Practice does make perfect, so that's a nice little idiom. Uh, and then another one, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. Another idiom for you. Okay, so easy to, yeah, anyways, I think everybody understands. If you don't use it, you lose it. It works with a lot of things. Mm-hmm, apps, what else we got here? Dictation, okay, so, so here's Mahmood. Watch vlogs, video blogs, right, on YouTube to help speak daily routine sentences. Yeah, so there you go, using YouTube, watching a two-minute video, three-minute video, maybe a one-hour video, uh, picking up some new expressions there. Gloria, dictation, what is dictation? So that's when, for example, you hear something and you're listening to something and you write it down word by word. This is an interesting one because I think it, it can help students become more aware of what we say. So if I speak really fast and I'm not really paying attention to how clearly I'm pronouncing everything, you might think, oh, he didn't say this word, he didn't say that word, he didn't say that word. But actually I did. I just whoop, spoke really fast. And so that's a good one. The dictation is it helps you to kind of like, oh, this is how you say this really quickly. So dictation is a good one. I like that one. Uh, what else we got here? Hello English, Zied says. Hello English is an awesome app for mastering English grammar. Let's check it out. Hello English. So, so it's an application. Google Play. Learn English. Learn English. No, 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 no. Okay. Free interactive lessons, conversational English. Sometimes they have a video. No video for this one. But there you go, there's, a, there's an option for you. That's it right there. What else we got? Oh. Hmm, okay, there you go. There's another app you guys can check out. Lots of ideas coming today. Uh, watch The Simpsons with subtitles. Yes, you can definitely do that. There's a, there are websites out there where you can watch a lot of movies with the subtitles. Sometimes very new movies, sometimes really old movies, but it, everything is out there on the internet. If you go and look for it, you can probably find it. Uh, great idea as well. Uh, I had a student who used to learn English through video games and, and of course movies and stuff. And usually the students who learn through a video game or a movie, the, usually their pronunciation is quite good, sounds really good, uh, their listening skills seem to be quite high, and they sound, like I said, the pronunciation is good, they sound really natural. So I would say, you know, songs, uh, movies, 
um, video games could be a good way to start getting you know some of the regular stuff because in school you know we teach you one thing but then when you're outside school you learn another thing so I think you need the best of both worlds right uh, good idea for that okay hmm what else we got here yeah okay audio books a great idea and yeah there's websites out there as well where you can Sometimes in my class, I'll do a real book, not just an, you know, an ESL book or an ESL text, but we'll do a real book, uh, real reading, right? And I always give the recommendation, don't choose a book that's too hard. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to throw the book away. You're going to switch to French. Don't choose a, you can choose a book that's easier because I think uh, what is the thing that everybody needs? So when you're learning a second language, you need experience, as much experience as possible, changing it on your phone reading books, you know, using your phone in English, reading books, watching movies, video games, just getting as much as you can, right, as often as you can. That's the repetition and that's the experience you need. So the more you can get, the better it is. Um, but I'm a big believer in books and I think audiobooks would be a great way to do for listening as well. And there are websites out there. I think I might have a copy of a website that I can give you guys because I'll be honest, I think books are probably one of the best ways to learn a second language because you can do it alone. Uh, you can improve your reading, you can improve your vocab, you can improve your listening. Can you improve your pronunciation? Mm, good question. But I think you could definitely improve all the other stuff. And even your writing you could improve. And you could improve your speaking. Everything you can get from books. So I'm gonna say books could be the number one way. One of the, one of the best ways to improve a lot of your skills. Uh, so I'm gonna share a website with you that I came across which was really awesome. No, not that one. Let's get away from that. Greedy Reader, this one. So I found this website on the internet because I wanted my students to read real books, not just, you know, an English book, like an ESL book. I wanted real books. So I found this one, and this is a pretty little awesome website, so I'm gonna share this one with you. There it is. So if you look on this website, it's got different levels, so what's your level? Choose your level. Choose a level that's not too easy and not too hard, maybe right in the middle, and they have all these books. So let's say I'm an intermediate level. So I click on that, I go here, and they have some classic books. Uh, they're a little bit older books, uh, but I think you can still find something that's gonna be interesting for you. They're famous writers, right? Like Charles Dickens is a famous writer. Uh, Scott Fitzgerald, so a lot of American writers, Jane Austen, so some pretty classic ones and I think if you go to the lower levels you can also get some more fun ones as well. Mm. Or just classic, maybe not super fun. But this is a website, I'm going to share this website with you because you guys can go there. And the great thing about this, check this out, this is probably the best part. If I do, for example, this one, okay, Macbeth is a bad example, let's not do Macbeth. Let's go, let's go to one of the, let's go to one of the upper intermediate books. Uh, pocket full of rye. The Talented Mr. Ripley. Boom. There's a book. This is a movie as well, and it's a good movie. Uh, so what you can do is you click here and you choose download or read online now. And does this one have it? Sometimes. And there we go. So there you go. You can get it in different forms. Let me let me put that up. Don't worry. I'm gonna send. Let me uh, let me send this link to you now so you can check it out. So there it is. Uh, English-ebooks.net and you can choose the form, so you can get it in EPUB, MOBI, whatever you want, text, and there's an MP3 file. Boom! Look at that. So now you can read the book, and then you can listen to the book without reading it, just to keep it coming, right? Keep that coming in. Uh, breaking News English, yeah, we use a little Breaking News English at our school as well. Uh, I'm not a fan, but, but I like it because it is modern, it is uh, up-to-date news stories. So there you go, I was sharing a few tips here. Let me catch up and see what else everyone else said. The Smart app is great. There we go. There's an option. Ebooks with transcripts. So that's for you, Lolly. That link that I put down there, that's for you. You, you probably like that. It'll help. Um, <laughs> choose what works for you. Sure. Yeah, there are a number of ways. I agree with Ziad. You have to expose yourself as much as you can to the language you're trying to learn. Italki is fantastic to meet. I met my best friend there. Boom. Okay, that's a cool one. Italki. Let's let's have a quick look because this is a good this is a good topic. Italki. Italki. Italku. Learn a language online. Okay. Boom. There's another option. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh huh. Interesting. Okay, so there you go. There's another one. Uh, online website for 101. And there are a lot if you just search, you know, learning English online. Uh, you'll probably get a lot of different websites. But there you go. Here's another one called italki, which apparently is quite cool. And you got a lot of teachers on there. Awesome. Very nice. Uh, how are we doing here? What else we got here? Okay. Uh, a lot of deep English breaking news. What's deep English? I'll have to check that one out later. Uh, Ziad says there's a website called what, what, Wattpad, and it's stacked with free books, which are written by amateur authors. That's why I really like this book, because they don't use very complex or events. Oh, let's take a look at that, Wattpad. Let's see what this is all about. Wattpad.com, stories you'll love. Okay, so you got to sign up. Let's see, action adventure. Okay, so there you go. There's a bunch of different categories here where people, I guess, amateur writers, write a lot of different topics and you can check them out and I guess you can read them all so if I wanted to read some anime I guess I could mm hmm fairy tale Naruto okay oh interesting boom there you go a lot of stuff on here there you go you don't have to read the anime you can read whatever you want of course uh, but there you go there's another one I'm gonna be I'm gonna be stealing some of these so thank you very much guys I'm gonna be stealing a few of these and using them in my own class as well because some of these are, are good things uh, what else we got here news and levels I recommend this website oh my goodness you guys are you guys are killing me giving me so much stuff here news in levels okay look at that so there you go you can do the news okay what yeah all right, boom, there's another one, news and levels. That looks interesting. So you kind of get different levels of maybe the same article. Sounds like a breaking news English kind of thing. Uh, uh, oh, and it's very up to date. So they're doing new stuff. That's interesting. Cool. Boom, another one. So take notes, guys. Keep a, keep a copy of this chat that we're doing right now because this is a lot of good stuff. Uh, smart channel. If you want to beef up, like it. Beef up your English ability. Love that one, Ciro. Uh, all right, very nice. Gloria says, Target stores release classic stories at the beginning of the school year. They're very affordable and easy to understand. I love TED as well. I really love TED Talks. Yep, I agree. Good here, here for the TED Talks. They're pretty awesome. ESL Fast is also good. All right, let's take a quick look. What's ESL Fast got to offer? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait. Is this one? Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, English level three. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there you go. Little introduction. What do we got here? Is it some kind of activity? Okay, a little bit of reading, possibly some audio. Okay, good. Get yourself familiar. Get some practice reading at your level. That looks all right as well. Okay, yeah, there we go. Intermediate. Boom, there's another one. There's another one you can check out. All right, very cool. So uh, I guess one of the things we can do today is we'll jump into, we're going to do a little bit of a reading about ESL today. And then maybe if we'll have a little bit of time, we can do a little bit of research. I would like to do some research into second language acquisition, learning a second language. TED is difficult, but uh, you have the subtitles. You can always turn on the subtitles. They have the script, so you can slow down, read, take your time, or just choose an easier one because they have different levels. They have high school levels. They have university levels. So you can kind of choose. And some speakers speak really complicated language, and some are not so bad. So just choose carefully. Take a little, a little read or a little listen before you start, and I think you, you can be okay with the TED Talks as well. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's jump into this. We're going to do a little bit of reading today as well on the topic, of course, of language learning. So I'm going to share this document with you so you guys can take a copy of that. Uh, let's see here. We're all good. No, let's change that. And this, so let's start with this one. Let me share this document with you. There it is. So click on that link right there in the, in the chat. And we're going to look at this document today. And if we go back, this document is, uh, well, starting with number one, we can do a quick one here. Brainstorm words related to vocabulary acquisition, learning a second language, learning vocabulary for two minutes. So let's start with this. This is a good warm up. We did some already, and we're going to add this. Uh, we're going to add this to the document that we're, we put a few words on. So whenever we learn something, we put it on this document over here, and that way you guys have it and you can share it. Uh, you can have it forever, and you can share it with other friends if you want all that good stuff. 
All right, so let's do that. Brainstorm some words related to vocabulary acquisition for two minutes. What are some words that we use to talk about learning vocabulary? Uh, so, for example, one of them might be pick up. How do you pick up new words? And pick up is a phrasal verb, of course, uh, which means get. So pick up. So, for example, when I was in Taiwan, I remember, I remember one day when I learned a, a Mandarin word. And I picked it up because uh, there was a mother, and she was talking to her child, and she said, Deixia. And Deixia means wait. And I was like, oh, context. I was like, yeah, sweet. So I've kind of learned that word. So pick something up. I picked that word up when I was in Taiwan. So there's a phrasal verb, which means to get or acquire. Acquire a second language, right? Expand your vocabulary. Yes, right? You grow. Your, your vocabulary gets bigger. You can expand. That's true. Uh, what's another way to say expand? Increase, of course. Increase your vocabulary. Good for TOEFL. Use a variety of words. Expand, increase, uh, all of those. Okay? Pretty self-explanatory there. Enlarge. Enlarge one's vocabulary. Yeah, we can add that one as well. Enlarge your vocabulary. Okay. Uh, and maybe broaden. We'll add one more word. Broaden your vocabulary. All mean the same thing. Okay. Uh, learning vocab. Um, acquiring. Yeah. Boosting. Okay. So we got a lot of words for the same thing. So maybe let's let's change it. Let's, let's think about uh, what are some words you normally hear when people talk about learning a language. Grammar, vocabulary, um, pick up, right? Increase, uh, spend time studying. What are some words that we use generally when we talk about language, learning a second language? Um, context. So uh, here's a word we would use a, a lot, right? So context. So for me, when I was in Taiwan, there was that lady with her mother, and that was the context. So I got, I understood the context, and then I got the word from the context. So context is kind of like, you can think of it as the environment. So sometimes when you're reading, sometimes we give students a reading activity, and we say, okay, well, look at the context, look at the paragraph, what's happening in the situation. And so what do you think that word means? Just look around, understand the context, and then try to guess what that one word means. Spelling, fluency, yes, fluency is a word we use. What is fluency? Something you might need in some kind of academic exam. Can you continue speaking without stopping, stopping, stopping all the time? Good fluency, there you go, good. So we'll think of, think of that as continuous speaking. Pronunciation, yes. Uh, grammar, practice, repetition. Let's see. Let's add that one. Repetition for sure. Repeat, repetition. Every time you learn a language, you need the repetition, right? You need the listening repetition, you need the reading repetition, and you need the speaking and the writing repetition to remember everything. Uh, so, yeah, I think you know repetition. There we go. Picking up, intensive. Yes, intensive learning. What is intensive? Intensive is kind of like strong or very serious. So intensive learning is an adjective. So when you go, for example, and you travel in another country, that might be some intensive language learning, right? Some like serious, strong, you're in another, you're surrounded by it. Um, what else we got here? Usage, origin, okay. Um, tone is another word that comes to my mind. Do you speak too formally or do you speak too informally? What's your tone like? Sometimes when you're doing some academic tests or something like that, they say, oh, your tone was bad. You, you were too formal. You should have been more casual. So tone is something we use as well. Uh, the formality of your language. Boom. Immerse, immersion, good word. Right, so when you go and you travel abroad, you go and work in another country, you study in another country, or maybe you just speak another language, that is immersion. You are putting yourself like you get immersed in water. Immersion would be second language immersion. And we have this program in school uh, in Canada where a lot of students will go and learn French. And usually when they graduate, they're pretty, pretty good, especially in the reading and listening. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, intonation, yes, this is a word we use. Um, 
the intonation. Oh, really? And your voice goes up. Maybe some languages don't have that as much, but some do. So you have to, this is something you usually need to practice, uh, intonation in your voice. Uh, the pitch. Is that pitch? The pitch. The rising and falling sounds in a language. That's the way I'm going to describe it anyways. Mm -hmm. Putting yourself 100% in something. Activity, language learning. Okay. What else we got here? Rhythm. Yeah, rhythm's good. That's a good one. I'll, I'll, I might skip that one, but rhythm. Can you? Do you have a good... Good rhythm. See, this is rhythm. You understand. There we go. Practice verbs, nouns, imitation, communication, comprehension. There's a good ESL word, like a, a language learning word. So comprehension. Do you understand? How is your comprehension in English? Do you understand a lot or do you have trouble understanding certain words? What's your comprehension like? Comprehension. There we go. Ability to understand. Okay, yeah, and what learners, right? Visual learners, um, different types of learners. Okay, voiceless, like a little bit of pronunciation. Voiceless, voiced and voiceless. Like if you do the think sound, that's a voiceless sound. Or if you do the, uh, for example, the m sound, then that's going to be a voiced sound. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. So we got a, we got a little taste here. So let's jump in. Let's go into what we're going to do today. We're going to work on this voc vocab activity and reading. So let's start with this. So let's go to part two here. We're going to look at we're going to look at this, and we'd like to do this one together. Let's get some ideas. What do these words mean before we read about them in the next text? So let's start with this one. The first word. Uh, you can work with me. I'm going to just go here, but I'm going to quickly go through here. So it says here, with your groups, define each word, cor correctly pronounce it, explain the meaning and or usage, offer an example sentence. Structure. What is structure in English? What does it mean? And how can I use it in a sentence? Can I write on this document? No, I can't. Anyways, I guess we'll just talk about it. Oh, wait. I can write on this document. Here we go. Okay, so the first word is structure. What is structure? Uh, yes, it is part of something. That's true. And when, when we talk about language learning, what do we usually say about structure? How's your structure? Oh, he has good structure, bad structure. What does it mean when we talk about language learning? Rodrigo, it looks like he's got a definition here. The arrangement of and relations between the parts or elements of something complex. There you go. Complicated definition. So let's let's just make a sentence. Maybe that will be a little bit more clear. You can almost think of it as a okay. Sentence structure. Sentence structure. The for you know the the how you make the sentence. Sentence structure is important. Uh, is an important part of learning a language. Almost like a system, right? You could say uh, the language, yeah, but it's a little different. Okay, anyways, structure. All right, next word. Next word is obvious. What does obvious mean? And what would be a good definition of obvious? Okay, yeah, Khalil is part of the grammar writing skills. Obvious, easy to be noticed. That sounds pretty good. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Can I write that here? Yes, I can. Easy to be noticed, seen. Oh, I guess noticed is better because it could be read as well. So easy to be noticed, obvious. It's kind of like clear, right? So how would, I, how would I put that? Give me a sentence where I could use predictable, evident, yeah, all those, all those work. How can I use that in a sentence if I'm going to say obvious? It is obvious that learning a second language can be difficult obvious okay clear obvious all those words all right thank you I, ho I hope it was I hope it, that's a good that's a good explanation if it's obvious uh, encounter what does let's go to the next one here we got a few more what does this word mean here encounter so what do you encounter every day and uh, what's the meaning of it 
Might have to get my own. Mm-hmm. Encounter. Let's see what the what the internet says about encounter. Come across, yeah, good word. Experience something. Yeah, drop by, maybe. Let's see what encounter comes up as. As a verb, it's an unexpected experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You would encounter a bear in the wild, or you would encounter something. So let, I'll just steal that. Thank you, Google. I like you. Put that there. Something difficult or hostile. Yeah, you might encounter a bear. Or when you travel in Canada, you might encounter language problems, right? So something unexpected, or you have to deal with something which is difficult. All right, so let's keep that going. Encounter. When traveling abroad, you may encounter mm, stress, stressful situations. Boom. All right, very nice. Next one, we kind of talked about this word. Acquisition is the next word. What, what exactly can we say about acquisition? What does it mean? Yep, agreed. Encounter with some hardship. Uh, what else? To acquire something. There we go. Easiest, right? To acquire. Use it as a verb. To get something, right? So I'll use that as well. To acquire or get something. Both of those work. Acquisition. Language acquisition, right? This is, this is what we use when we do some kind of research about that. Okay. Language acquisition. has many strategies. And that's true. Okay, good. Technique, how many more we got here? Reasonable, Cont okay, good, we're almost done here. So let's go here, technique. What would be another way, what would be another way to say technique if we were talking about uh, some kind of, what would it be a strategy, a way? of doing something. A technique. Uh, you know, everything has techniques. Sports have techniques, right? Khalil says, which, which way we use to learn? Yeah, Rory says, a way to make things easier. Um, maybe not easier necessarily, but just a way, a way of doing something for sure. I agree with that. Um, okay, so we'll make a simple sentence here. There are many language learning techniques, ways, methods, right? All of that works. Good, good. Reasonable. Difficult, more of a difficult word. Uh, what is reasonable? And how would you explain it? Uh, I think I'm going to ask Google for a good definition of reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's fair and sensible. OK, there we go. It gives you another word, of course. Uh, so first one, appropriate, fair. This one seems to be the, the predominant one here. Seems to be fair. Fair. Good amount. OK. Learning English in what I wrote won't appear on the link. Oh, OK, maybe I sent the wrong link. Let me try this one. Let me give you that link, and let's try that one. Try that, Judith. That should be the one I'm working on here. Okay. Hello, Farah. How you doing? Uh, learning English in uh, one year is not reasonable. Well, it's not really fair. Mm, reasonable. Somebody give me a, I need a sentence here. Fair and, what was it? Toil? Toil? I'm not sure. Okay, unfair, no, fair, fair. Reasonable is fair. Uh, expected, and also the normal expectation is, right? Uh, becoming a good English speaker in six years is reasonable if you work hard. And maybe six years is a little bit much. You could probably do it more if you work really hard, but that would work as well. And context. What is context? Last one. 
We talked about this one before, so maybe we'll skip this one. Context, the situation, right? Uh, let's see, what does Google say about context? It's a very detailed explanation. Okay, context. The circumstances that form blah, 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 blah. The situation. The circumstances that form the setting for an event statement, blah, 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 so it can be fully understand. Yeah, you need context when you want to understand something. So if, you, if you're like, oh, when should I use this word in English? But then you see somebody use that word, and you're like, ah, okay, that's the context. That's the time when I should use it, right? Uh, context is important when un understanding a second language. That's for sure. Okay, I think that's fine. Let's go on. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to skip this section because I'm going to go straight to the reading we're going to do here. And what I'd like you guys to do is do this. I would like you to read the following article. You can also listen to me. I'm going to read it while we go along. We'll talk about this thing. And then we're going to answer a few questions that come at the end of the reading. So let's go to the reading section of your article. And if you go down here, uh, you also get some true false questions. And then we're going to focus on those after. OK, so let's start. Let's start with this one here. Let's start with the reading. We're going to do the reading, and then we're going to answer a few questions after. So here we go. I'll make this big, I'll disappear, and we're going to do this at the same time. All right, here we go. Like that. So, a beginning English student says, Go Canada, homestay, next month. There isn't any grammar in. There isn't any grammar structure, but he will be understood. Likewise, a foreign tourist who is lost in New York says, where? Subway. Close? He should be directed to the nearest subway. This is the power of vocabulary. For students who are just beginning to study English, most new words can be used immediately. The words have an obvious use because doctor, hungry, or subway are often used words. For example, they quickly become part of their everyday English. However, at higher levels, many new words are less frequently. Students encounter the words only sometimes while reading or listening, and so vocabulary acquisition seems less important. New words are also more difficult to remember. Does that make vocabulary, new vocabulary less important? No, of course not. But the techniques and strategies used to remember new words becomes more important. First, and perhaps most important, a student needs clear short-term and long-term goals. How many words will he learn in a month? How many words will he learn in six months? A student often lacks motivation without goals, but keep the goals reasonable. Second, when a student encounters a new word, it's always best to guess the meaning from the context of the sentence. After guessing the meaning, then he can check an English-English dictionary. This technique also helps to improve a student's reasoning ability. We didn't really talk about reasoning, but reasoning is your ability to understand the answer, figure out the answer. And yet, if he is wrong, the student will want to know why. Lastly, it just comes down to hard work. A student should practice writing his own definitions, synonyms, and sentences at home. He should also read and listen, read, read or listen to English as much as possible. As a final word of advice, relating new words to personal experience helps. I agree with this last one. Uh, I like to do this a lot in my classes, this last one here. So whenever I teach a new word to my students, I always say, okay, well, now take this word and talk about someone in your family. Talk about your best friend. Talk about your life. Talk about your city. Personalized experience. I'm really big on this one, and I try to do that in a lot. Okay, so you read the article. Do you have any questions about the article? There might have been a few words that come up in there. Uh, feel free to ask any questions uh, before, while we're going to jump in and go to the next section, we're going to do the true-false. But feel free to ask about any questions about any of the words that popped up there. So let's go to the next section, and we're going to answer these questions uh, using uh, true-false answers. So let's start with the first one here. And I'll put this one in the chat here. Uh, first one says, new words for beginning students have an immediate uh, and practical use. 
Was that true or false uh, when we talked about it? New words for beginning students have an immediate, very quickly, and practical everyday use. True or false? So let's see, let's go back up. We've got false. What's my shirt's color? It's blue, Ziad. Is that, is, that is that the question you really want to know? Uh, where, okay, some people say true, some people say false. False, true, okay. Where did they say here? So tell me the sentence. I'd like you to go into your document and highlight the sentence for me and put it in the chat where they said uh, that this idea was true or false because we always got to find exactly what the answer was. New words for beginning students have an immediate and practical use. Where did they say that in the article? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. And I think you got it. Boom. Yep. Silvio's got it right there. Used immediately. And also the section about obvious use. Boom. That's our answer right there. For students who are just beginning to study English, most new words can be used immediately. The words have an obvious use. Doctor, hungry, subway are often words used. And they quickly become part of everyday English. So maybe we shouldn't teach that. Maybe teachers shouldn't teach those words too much, right? Because the student's going to learn those words anyways. Maybe we should focus on other stuff. Um, oh, okay. Um, so there we go. That was answer number one. New words. And again, what do, when, you, when you, we look at this example, they use some new words. What kind of words do they use usually? Usually it's a, it could be a noun, right? Nouns have a lot of information. Doctor, doctor, uh, hungry, right? Maybe an adjective. Or you know what I mean so maybe some adjectives some nouns. those usually have the most content and so even if you don't know the prepositions and the grammar you can still speak pretty quickly right abstract nouns at higher levels exactly right and everything of course gets more complicated you don't need the super complicated words um, I know there's some some university I think it's called there they develop something if I think it's called the Collins build or something like that. Collins build. It's like the 1,000 words in English which are used the most. Maybe it's this one. Uh, no, is that it? Anyways, they did some research and they did. They wanted to find the most common words used. About 1,000 of them. So if you know these words, you can probably handle, you know, quite a bit in English. Yeah. Anyways, if you want to research it, it's probably out there. But. Um, do they have it? No. Yeah. Anyways, there was that. That's one way to look at language learning, right? Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, next one. Next one. Part B. Vocabulary acquisition is less important. That's the next one. True or false? Uh, vocabulary acquisition is less important at higher levels than at lower levels. True or false? Mm-hmm. Okay. These ones. There we go. So where was the answer there? Is less important at higher levels. So where did they say that? Did they say that? Okay. However, at higher levels, many new words are used less frequently. Students encounter only words. So is that what I meant there? So right there. Yeah, we got that. And it was there, vocabulary acquisition is less important at higher levels than at lower levels. Is it less important? Yeah, I guess so. Many new words are used less frequently. So you learn some, some higher level words, but you're never going to hear them in everyday life. Hello, Noor, how are you doing? Come on in. OK, so there we got that. That's good. Uh, how about C? Let's move on to C, because I think we got that one done. How about C? Techniques and strategies become more important to remember new words. True or false? What did they say in the text about that? Techniques and strategies become more important to remember new words. Did they say that? Mm -hmm. New words are also difficult to remember. Students encounter words sometimes, yeah. Ah, so bag vocabulary, new words are difficult. Okay, yeah. So what did they say here? True, true. Yep, exactly. Okay. But the techniques and strategies uh, used to remember new words become more important. Uh, there we go. 
Okay, so learning new, so once you get to the higher levels, yeah, it's harder to learn, but does that make it less important? No, but the techniques and strategies used to remember. So you need more sophisticated techniques to remember higher level words. Um, good, maybe word forms. So if I give you a new word, um, you know, if, I, if somebody gives you a new word, difficult word in English, how are you going to remember that word? Are you going to... Are you going to make a connection? Uh, sometimes words sound similar. For example, reduce, remove. And you can kind of look at the R, E, and sometimes reduce or remove. They're going to have a similar connection, and that might be a way to help you. Substitute. Um, no, not substitute. But anyways, uh, you know what I'm saying. There's some words, and they have a very similar, a similar way about them. And if you know the meaning of that one, you probably know the meaning of that one. So there's word connections. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, that's true. Smart English, no smart English on Friday. Thursday, Wednesday, and Monday is the time. All right, very nice. So let's go on. Uh, next one here, Part D. Students should consult an English English dictionary first when they don't know a word. Okay, what was the answer for that one? So there we go. True or false on this one here. Should they use an English English dictionary when they first don't know a word? And why would you do that? What would be the reason for that? True, 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 true. Uh, there we go. Read as much as possible. Where was it here? There we go. After guessing. Uh, yeah, and the question was they should. Yeah, okay. When they don't know a word. Why do you think they said English English dictionary? Why, why would they go straight to the English dictionary? So it says, after guessing the meaning, then he can check the English English dictionary, not French English, but English English. This technique helps to improve a student's reasoning ability. Okay, so there you go. Figuring out the word. And if he is wrong, the student will want to know why. And I guess the other thing about this technique is that it, it immerses you in the language a little bit more, right? You're not always going back to your first language and trying to understand the second language. You're just trying to jump into the second language, which is a great idea. All right, cool. Almost done here. Uh, students practice their own definitions. Students should practice their own definitions, synonyms, and sentences at home. True or false? I think we can probably guess the answer for this one, even if we didn't read the article. Should be pretty straightforward. Practice their own definitions, and I think some of you guys talked about doing this already, right? It's a good way to practice things at home. Uh, lastly, it comes down a student should practice his own writing. Da, 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 da. You should also listen or read as much as English in pos as possible. Okay, so there we go. All right, very nice. And I think that's good enough for the reading section. So maybe what we'll do with the last little bit of time, uh, let's do an internet search, okay? So I'd like you guys to uh, search the internet for second language learning techniques. And let's see. Let's see what they have. If you can find some research, that would be really cool, right? Because if they've researched how to learn a second language, what are the most effective strategies? Maybe there's no effective strategy because people are so different. But go ahead, go on the internet, and let's do a little search, and let's see if we can find something new, a uh, different strategy. Hopefully, we don't get bombarded with advertisements, but maybe you can find a little bit of something about what are some good techniques for learning a second language. We've got all these, so later today, make sure to go back and maybe save some of the information in this chat and take it out because I'm definitely going to save some of this. Uh, I got this iTalk one, which could be interesting. Uh, this website for reading. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to the internet and let's do a quick search. Second language acquisition techniques or something like this. Try to find some information. So language, second language learning techniques. And let's see what Google tells us. Okay, of course, there's going to be some websites on there. Uh, language learning methods. So, okay, some books. Common strategies. Mm, here we go, PDF. What is this one? Approaches and methods for foreign language teaching. That could be good for me. Methodo methodological approaches. Okay, language teaching strategies, language pedagogy. Mm, a, lot of stuff of the, a lot of this stuff is for teachers. Yeah, there's a lot of results. You're right. But let's let's just search through a few and let's see if we can find. We got blogs, we got new method, the best new method to learn a foreign language. 
smartlanguagelearner.com. All right, I'll give you a chance. Let's see what let's see what you got for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, nothing new here. No. Okay, never mind. It's cool to get into the research and find exactly what people are doing. What are the what are the new things? I mean, sometimes they're just new methods with a fancy name, right? Like you got to do this teaching style or whatever. These are some old ones, but anyways, um, okay, it doesn't seem to be giving. I'd like to find some research in the future. One website I did find earlier, which I thought was kind of cool. If you guys want to check it out, I thought this one was kind of cool. Uh, this one is all about uh, articles on language learning. Can you learn language with an app? What does the research say? So this one's interesting, right? So are you using an application to learn a language? How effective are they? Maybe a little bit of research on that. Uh, talking about being older and learning a foreign language or becoming fluent. Um, being younger is not always better. So there's some interesting ones here. Oh, there we go. Why your English ability could be judged on how you look. Oh, isn't that nice? It's like, oh, you, your English ability is good, but I'm just basing it on how good you, how sexy you are. Very awesome. Baby talk, music development. There we go. This one was kind of interesting. Maybe just some light reading. Britain has forgotten how to speak its European neighbor's language. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe Canada too. Hinglish in India. There we go. More Indians are fluent in the hybrid of Hindi and English than they are in English. Yeah, that sounds about right. What is the easiest age to learn? Okay, so anyways, there's a few interesting articles out there, and there's a few pages of that, so check it out if you're interested. Um, I hope you guys got, I hope the most useful thing you got from today was maybe a few different websites that we saw today, a few different applications that people in the chat are using. Uh, one of the applications that we do use here is Discord. So if you're on Discord, come and check it out. It's a way that you can keep in touch with some of the other students in the chat. So I would say jump in here, start some conversations on here, uh, keep in touch with some of the other students here. Uh, good little app for that. It's more of a gaming app, but you can we use it for chats and it works just fine. Uh, the other thing, of course, subscribe to Smart. Check out other YouTube videos out there. Uh, Kareem's here on Wednesdays as well, so you can always check out those. We, all, we try to keep you smart, try to improve your English as well. Check out the one that I gave you here, uh, the reading. If you're into reading or need to get into reading, reading is one of the best ways I think you can learn a second language because you get so much information in one. Uh, and then check out any of these websites or these apps that people were sharing with you. So go back, scroll up through the chat, and see what's out there, and see, uh, see what could be good for you, what could be a good match for you. Is it online learning one-to-one, -one, or is it uh, maybe some kind of application, some games, movies, whatever, whatever works for you? Find your method and, and start practicing and start improving. Okay, so I think that's about it for me today, guys. Uh, go out, check some of those applications out, the, some pretty cool stuff, some pretty cool websites that people were posting in the chat. Keep on practicing the English, keep getting better, keep coming back to hang out with us next week. Uh, tell your friends, tell your friends about coming and checking out Smart if they're interested in learning English as well, the more the merrier. Other than that, you guys have a great week. We'll catch you next week. I'm back on Monday. On uh, what time on Monday? We're back at 3.30 p.m. on Monday, Vancouver time. Kareem the Dream stream on Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. And I'll be back next week at this time, uh, 2.30 p.m. on Thursday, all Vancouver time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay smart. We'll catch you next week. Uh, check out some apps. Read some books. Do it all. Learn English. Be awesome. Bye-bye.